Bright lights. Tonight we have uh, two bright lights that are very near and dear to my heart. Um, the first is uh, Waukesha Water Utility in collaboration with our environmental education program. There's a couple of uh, really neat collaborative things that are going on. There was a neat article in the paper here a couple of weeks ago that talked about it. And we have a few folks here tonight. Who's going to lead off? How are we going to do this? Ah. Uh, good evening. My name's uh, Ben Hunsanger. I'm the current environmental ed coordinator for the school district. And I have some people here with me tonight who I'd like to introduce first. Uh, we have Mary Edelmeyer and Kelly Zelstra, both with the Waukesha Water Utility. And then Laura Carraro, uh, a science teacher at South, and her student, Ashley Skaya. So they're going to be uh, working with me to kind of do a presentation. What we'd like to do is share with you what's been happening with the partnership with the Waukesha Water Utility and not only the environmental ed program, but also the high school land and water studies course. So <coughs> I think we're ready to go. And Mary and I will be doing this first part and then Laura and uh, Kelly will do the second along with Ashley. So uh, the partnership with the water utility um, in the early 90s and Mark I guess you're gonna have to help me out here. Um, the curriculum started actually in 1991 but it was a cooperative uh, venture with the Waukesha water utility, the school district environmental ed program and the UW extension. And uh, they started a pilot program in the spring of 1990 with just four schools. But that following fall, all 17 elementaries participated. Okay. Um, now, currently, uh, we do half the 14 elementary schools in the spring, the other half in the fall. It's a 10 to 12 a day unit comprised basically of science uh, lessons in the classroom and then that culminates with a field trip full day field trip at the Fox River Sanctuary and kids do both chemistry and biology at both the river and the marsh this next slide is a picture of the biology some of the animals that they come in contact with and the next slide is uh, some of the chemistry they actually test nitrates uh, chlorine and phosphates. Uh, some of the things that we want kids to be able to do, and we've, we've done this since the beginning, but currently we want them to be able to use uh, 21st century skills. So they're collaborating, they're communicating, they're using critical thinking, and sprinkling in some creativity. We also, this summer, uh, made some connections to the current next generation science standards and that first standard up there deals with um, the earth systems and the second one is earth and human activity and that then leads us into what Mary is going to talk about <coughs> okay I'm Mary from Waukesha Water Utility and I'm going to start talking about um, what the students do when they come out to our pumping stations. Um, first of all, they, I have the privilege of working with the fifth graders and we get about a thousand students every year that come out. They're at the water utility station for about an hour and a half. And when they come out, they learn about water, where it comes from, how it's treated, how we get it to their homes, and then they learn about the future concerns dealing with the quality and quantity issues. And then they end up going back to class where they follow up with the classroom lessons, assessments, and perhaps even doing tests. Um, for those of you that don't know where the station is that they come to, it's actually out at the Fox River, um, Fox Run Shopping Center. If you dr come into the driveway, pull into the driveway right off of Sunset Drive, there's like a big dome-shaped building. If you're familiar with that, that's our reservoir. Mm -hmm. And next to it is a building, a small building. That's our pumping station. So that's where the students come out. The bus drops them off. 
And they're greeted by the, an environmental education instructor because it's the environmental education instructor and myself that we, we partner together to teach this class at the pumping station. And they arrive and right off the bat, we're able to show them to talk about like the distance, give them a visual of the distance of how deep our wells are. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a tree line, the farthest tree line you can see that's about 2,000 feet away, which is about the distance of how deep our wells are. And then we talk to the right, there's that reservoir, and we talk about the reservoir, how basically it stores the water, all the clean drinking water. From there, we go inside the building, and we start to talking about where our water comes from. We begin by asking, where does Chicago get their water from? Where does Milwaukee get their water from? <coughs> Obviously, Lake Michigan. And then we ask them if they think we get our water from Lake Michigan. We always get people to raise their hands. What about the Fox River? We get people to raise their hands. What about underground? Once in a while, we get people to raise their hands, and then sometimes they raise their hands that they don't know. But obviously, the answer is underground. And um, then from there, we, we go into building, we do a hands-on activity where we actually build an aquifer, and they come up, and they actually drill the well, <coughs> they have the syringe where they pump it up, and then we talk about um, how the whole process works. Then from there, we go into talking about this groundwater model. Once they understand where the, that the water comes from the ground, we talk about this groundwater model. This groundwater model was made at the UW Stevens Point, and we've had this model for many years. And this model is an excellent tool that talks about the different layers of the soil. It talks about the private wells um, versus municipal wells. Um, it talks about the confining layer. If you can see, there's like that gray layer. And that prevents um, like the rainwater that falls here in Waukesha from getting through that layer. So our water here, for those of you that don't know, our water that we drink here actually comes from Jefferson County. Because if you can see where that gray layer stops, and there's like that white area where it cracks, that's like limestone, and that's where the water falls in Jefferson County and travels to Waukesha. And that actually takes about 50 or 60 years for that to happen. So it's sometimes when we're out there with the students, and it's, if it's raining that day, it works out perfect, because we can say like, you know, 50 or 60 years from now, you're going to be drinking that water that fell today in Jefferson County. And they're like, wow, I'm going to be like 60, 70 years old then. And they're amazed by that. And then we, can, we also contaminate this. We use some um, food coloring, and we're able to show how contamination can occur in, in, with, into the water and things that we have to watch for. And then we talk about testing, how a private well should be tested once a year versus our municipal water, how we're testing it all the time just to make sure it's safe to drink. So it's an excellent model that we use. Um, then from there, we talk about the water cycle. Um, this is an example of that confining layer, the shale, talking about how that rainwater doesn't get through. We actually put over the student's head and we pour water on it. And you know they're a little worried, but then they see it doesn't come through. But we do a lot of hands-on activities and really have the students involved. But then we just talk about that once we do get the water and we treat it, get it to their homes, we talk about where the water goes to next, how it goes to the wastewater treatment plant and how it goes um, to the Fox River, Illinois River, Mississippi River, all the way down to the ocean and then talk about the whole um, the water cycle, about how it gets back here, so how we never gain brand new water. Then from there, once they understand where our water comes from in the whole cycle, then we actually give them a tour of the actual equipment that we use. And we start out by showing them the well and talking about how our well is about a seven football fields long, deep. We talk about how it takes a lot of electricity to pump up that water. The water utility spends just a little over a million dollars a year to pump that water up just for electricity. We talk about how we treat the water, how we add a, a little tiny bit of fluoride and chlorine and sodium silicate for the iron. And we also talk about how we flush out the fire hydrants every year to get the iron out of the water. Um, and then from there, we talk about how the water goes up to the reservoir for the storage. Then from there, we go into the next room, which shows how we get the water out of the reservoir and how it goes through the booster station to create the pressure and how it push, pushes that water through our water mains underground, and it takes it up to the water towers. And the water tower is what gives us the water pressure. So we get some good pressure for fighting fires, gain the soap out of our hair, we get the good pressure. And then from there, it, continue on, it continues on through the water main and into the laterals of the house and into the fire hydrants. And then we, outside, we have a model of what the pipes actually look like underground and what it looks like underneath the fire hydrant so they can actually see see um, what it looks like. And we also talk about adopting a hydrant. We asked the students if they could help shovel it out in the wintertime just to keep our community safe. 
Um, from there, we go back inside and we talk about quality and quantity. And we talk about a lot of the ways that, peop that students can conserve. One of the big issues that we really touch on is showers, because lots of students take long showers. And we talk about how a five minute shower can use 40 gallons of water. And we just talk about the different ways that they can save water. Let's see here. And then what uh, we really want students to come away with is really two things based on everything that Mary has said and what you have listed there, but it really comes down to human impact and then also conservation, those two topics. The other thing on the next slide is with Waukesha One, what we're doing in environmental education is we want to give kids an opportunity to use these iPads. And what you're just going to see quickly happen here is how we've digitized some of the curriculum that we have onto the iPad so the kids can use it when they come over. So we have existing curriculum materials <coughs> that they can use. They can either use the old paper and pencil or they can use their iPad and go through uh, and look at what they're doing and also use that technology to get some other information for project-based learning or to go a little bit deeper. And we're in the process of doing this with uh, all the various grades that uh, come through environmental ed. But in this one, you can see it's related to fifth grade and the various things that they have access to. And then they can also go in and find some other things. And that has worked out pretty well. We've had a few groups of students come over and actually use those so they have that opportunity. And uh, next. Mm -hmm. Gonna go back to Mary. Okay, this was another event that we participated in the, the first time this past year, where we actually um, worked with the school district on, on doing a um, participating in the Fix a Leak Week. The EPA um, has a national Fix a Leak Week, and we talked with Ben Hunsinger about having the fifth grade students get an activity sheet where they actually um, they actually um, assess their toilet as far as the age of their toilet, the size of the toilet. They calculate how much each toilet how many gallons per flush for each toilet. They tested each toilet in their house to see if there was any leaks. So it was a real hands-on activity, real practical, real home, real. real. Um, and then from there, they, um, they assessed their toilet to see if they qualified for a toilet rebate. Because at the Water Utility, we are offering a $100 toilet rebate for anybody that replaces their toilets that are prior to 1994. Um, we had a very, very good, successful fix a week leak with the school district, 50% of the schools participated. That's fifth graders. So 50% in the very first year. So I was very, very pleased with that. 11% uh, actually had found that their toilets were leaking, which wastes a lot of water. So it saved our community lots of money, the families lots of money by finding those leaks. And 22% of those toilets were eligible for the $100 rebate. So once again, if you want to Go to the next slide. Once again, with the school district and the water utility working together, I mean, everyone benefits from that. And I have to personally say that I've had the privilege, privilege of working with Dan Warren with the Walk to Water Utility and the school board with the partnership, and he's been very instrumental in promoting the success of this program. And I want to th personally thank you for that and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. And now we'll segue to land and water studies. Kelly, Laura, and Ashley. Go ahead, is it? All right, um, this is the second year of Land and Water um, in Waukesha, and uh, this is the first year that we've worked with the water utility um, really directly. And um, we worked specifically on a, um, one project this semester so far, and we'd like to talk about that. Um, so we started out by making a visit to, um, to two sites. Um, do you want to talk about those? Sure. Kelly? The, uh, this slide shows the trip that her students took to the wastewater treatment plant. In the morning, we had gone to the water plant, so the slides are backwards, but that's okay. And in the afternoon, they went to the wastewater plant, and Tim gave them about a 90-minute tour. I know they talk about it in fifth grade, but it's nice to bring it back in high school because you have a different um, basis of knowledge at that point. And this is where we started our morning at the water treatment plant. It's a different plant that we go, than they went to in fifth grade. 
This one is over at, on Wolf Road. It's one of our water treatment plants where we treat for radium removal. So the students arrived at about 9 in the morning. We had a tour of the well house, then we went through the water treatment plant, and they had a lot of good questions. It was interesting to see how the students, with their various backgrounds, all keyed into one or two items that struck them as interesting. The ones that were interested in motors and horsepower, they really were impressed by how big the motor was. The ones that were into chemistry were interested in the pumps that we used to get the chemicals in and what testing was involved. And that was just a very interesting day in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So then uh, a couple weeks later, Laura invited me into her classroom for a day or a, a session. We showed a video of a well log, going back to what Mary talked about in fifth grade and how the aquifer works and how the well works. This was actually a camera that went down a well, so the students got to see what the inside of a shallow well looks like and what the inside of a deep well looks like. Honestly, I went in thinking that they would be totally bored and we spent most of the class with questions that they had, so it shocked me. What you see here is at the end of the class, we did a blind water taste test contest, if you will. I brought in seven samples of various water, groundwater that's softened, groundwater that's not softened, Oak Creek water from Lake Michigan, and distilled water because I'm a little bit mean, and then <laughs> various, I couldn't find mineral water that day or they really wouldn't have liked me, and then various bottled waters. So the students tried them out of Dixie cups. They had no idea what they were, and then they were asked to tell them which, tell us which ones they liked the most and why. So that was an interesting experience. I will let you know they all chose groundwater. Most of them liked the unsoftened water. The ones that liked softened determined that they had softeners at their house, so it was what they were used to. So that was an interesting project. And then they got into their actual project for the class. When Laura and I talked in the summer before the semester started, we wanted it to be, or she wanted it to be a project-based class. So I had gotten the information from our toilet rebate program, our sprinkling program, or our sprinkling ordinance, um, from H2O score, and from our cross-connection control program. And I gave it to her, and I asked her if her students might be interested in coming up with something using technology and using a younger viewpoint on how to promote those various programs over and above the, the bill stuffers that us 40, 50, and 60-year-olds think are normal. So, I don't know if you want to talk about what they did. Sure. Um, so, the students worked in groups of two to four, and um, they picked one of the programs that they wanted to work on promoting. And um, we had uh, lots of different uh, things come out of that. Um, two students make movies. One student made um, um, an animated movie, which you'll see in a minute, and one student made sort of like a movie trailer some sort of romantic thing about falling in love with water. Um, we had a group um, that decided to make door hangers to promote the sprinkling um, ordinance. Um, and a group, one group that thought it would be great to um, hang up um, signs um, where sprinklers or toilets are sold to encourage participation in the rebate program and then following the sprinkling ordinance. So lots of good creative ideas. And then um, we also, if you can go to the next slide, um, they made formal presentations um, to Kelly, and um, Karen was able to be there, and a few other people um, shared their ideas. And um, then Kelly, his, I don't know, no, you're doing with those right now, but. Oh, um, well, I did an initial presentation to the management group at the water utility, because as part of this project, the students were asked to tell us how long it would take to do the activity, how much it would cost to use the item in the real world, and we're currently trying to get copies of the video so the man management team can see that to try to determine if putting them on TV 25 or running them in some other manner or through YouTube would be good for the utility. Um, so there's a few things that are special about the way this class is designed that allows us to do this. Um, it's a flexible class. We have um, some general content things that we want to work on, but we can really modify that to whatever the students' interests are. Um, our targets are universal, so you can see that one of them is content, and it's, it's an important part of the class. We have lots of other important things that we're working on, like communication skills, presenting, working together well, um, asking questions, solving problems. Um, so this was a good project for us, and the class is going well. 
Um, one thing that was special about this project was that we were able to use technology. Um, this is my second year teaching the class, and the teacher at West, it's her first year teaching it. Um, so I um, helped to facilitate her students in the project, um, and we did that by using iPads. So I was able to film directions for them on my iPad, upload them to YouTube, and put them on Blackboard so those students could see it because they met a different hour than I teach my class. Um, so they could see the directions at school on the iPad. Um, I posted directions for them on Blackboard and um, using Google Drive. And um, we were able to communicate through email, through Google Docs. Um, we were able to switch things around so I could go over there for one day to meet with them. Um, and that worked out really well. It was a new and challenging experience for me, and I think for them too, to kind of working long distance with the teacher. But, um, and then the, they also were able to present to Kelly. Um, so this is one of the videos that the students made. pay for the <laughs> our membership so um, all right Ashley do you want to come up and talk a little bit about your experience in the class Sure. Um, I personally really enjoyed the program and the project that we did um, often like in school there's like a lot of things that we learn and a lot of it like can like you forget and doesn't really stick with you but this specific project I think like all the students involved will really remember we were able to get into groups with people that had similar interests and what topic they wanted to learn about. And we were given a lot of like creative freedom as far as what we wanted to make and how we wanted to make it. The expectations were clear and Ms. Carrado was really helpful in any way that we needed her. And I think that it was really great that the product that we created like could be useful in like our community. So we felt like more connected to the learning and the product and the topic because it went beyond just something we read in a book or read online, but it was something we created and could be implemented p potentially. So I think it was really great. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have any questions for any of us then. Any questions? Yes, Ms. R Ms. Ranacek. Thank you. I just have one. So out of the 22% that realized that they had leaking toilets and that they actually qualified for the, um, the $100 toilet rebate, how many, um, like, how many parents actually went and, and followed through with that? I wish I knew that, but the reason I don't know that is because when we give, give up the activity, the worksheets, we don't collect the student's last name or their address. <coughs> And then can you come tell my daughter that a five-minute shower takes uh, 40 <laughs> gallons of water? <laughs> yeah, a lot longer than five We've all minutes. been there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Como. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Uh, Ashley, I was wondering if you could maybe give us one or two takeaways uh, from this experience that's going to kind of last uh, with you. Um, I think I learned a lot about, like, water con conservation and the importance of it and how it affects, like, not only, like, you but like your community as well and it was just like great to think that like little things that we do could like actually make a difference for our community and another thing I I learned about the sprinkling ordinance and we like talked with our class and most people hadn't like heard about it like they've heard like a, like about like the name but they didn't know the rules or what you were supposed to do or why 
So we found that like one of the biggest issues with why it wasn't being like followed because lack of information <coughs> to the people who they're supposed to do it. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Ms. Um, Ms. Langell. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. I just wanted to add with our chairperson heading to Florida, the first time our family went to Florida, it was winter. And um, I remember both of our daughters just went, ooh, because they ran the tap water wherever we were staying and it was lukewarm. <laughs> and um, <laughs> as you know, at this time of year, and of course right now even more so, we get this wonderful ice oh. water <laughs> out of our tap at home in Waukesha. So I hope you don't miss that too much. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baumgart. Thank you. Uh, this uh, land and water course uh, was brought to CNI two or three years ago. I don't remember exactly when. Ben, probably you remember. Uh, and, and sometimes, as a member of CNI for many, many years, you, you kind of wonder where is this going and, and, and what does it mean? And you might just take a leap of faith on some of these things. And I guess it's really important for these issues to come back to the board so we can see a success like this. And, um, and, and the enthusiasm and, and the engagement that we had of our students, that's very important for that kind of feedback to come to the board. And uh, thinking, too, about what, what you've been teaching uh, the students and, and their, um, the reality of the situation with water and knowing that this part of Wisconsin is actually sometimes considered as a place for education on, on the water sciences, if you want to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I heard your feedback to be very, very valuable. So thank you for, for all of it. Thank you. Ms. Brzezink. Thank you. I don't know who can answer this, but um, I'm wondering uh, if, we, if, if we could ever run out of groundwater, why or why not? <laughs> that, that I was part of a conversation of some people in my neighborhood, and you know they know that uh, the water utility wants to bring in water from Lake Michigan, and uh, they want, I guess some of them didn't realize, um, you know, where the water comes from. Will it, will it always be there? Kelly, do, do, do you want the do past commission president to answer that one? Or? No, no. Go ahead. You can answer that. Well, I have a degree in geology, and uh, what Mary said is correct. The water that we drink here primarily comes from the lower shale, or sandstone aquifer, and it is, at the rate that we're taking it out, not sustainable. The water level keeps falling at a rate of somewhere it between does. 7 and 10 feet per year as we draw out oh, of it because oh. we pull it out faster than it rains uh, in Jefferson oh. County. So will we ever run out? Someday it is very plausible that we could. And that's why we're stressing conservation, starting with the young kids through high school, hoping that they take that message home to their parents, and uh, we just become a more conservative society. Thank you very much. I think the other thing we tell students is, you know, water is a finite amount, and, they, and that's a, a thing that they understand. Huh. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Edlund. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It, um, you know, the conservation efforts by the Waco Water Utility have really been paying off. Um, businesses that uh, I get into every now and then, industry in particular, uh, has been real cooperative in eliminating what we would call one source or one, one use uses of water. In other words, you know, we don't drink very much of the water that we pull out of the aquifer. We use it for many other things, mm -hmm. showers, laundry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm listening, listening things that you can relate to. But in industry, we use it for a lot of other things. Um, little known is, uh, for instance, the city of Waukesha's IT department, um, you know, computers run constantly. They never shut off. But we had computers uh, where the air conditioning system was cooled with water. So all we did was warm up the water just absorbing the heat from that, all the IT equipment, and then dumping it down the drain. What a waste. Now the city uses uh, what we can relate to as a normal air conditioning system. And a lot of industry has caught on with that too. So my question for you is, um, knowing that uh, we have many ways that we can conserve water, did anybody in your class come up with additional ideas that the community would find useful? 
Mm -hmm. um, most of our uh, like most of our like products that we came up with were more about like getting out information about conserving water. But I know one group thought about um, letting people know about like rain barrels where you can like collect like rainwater that you can use for things. So that could be something useful. Very good. Ms. Reinecheck. Thank you. One more. So, what was that one tip about when? Um, the two guys, I think, did it when they were talking about um, when you water your lawn, the first inch, after an inch, your lawn goes dormant. And so, do you remember that one? Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly about the inch, but I know when sprinkling your lawn, most of the water that's sprinkled is actually evaporated and completely wasted. So. I know that, and that like it's like a lot of people think that like your lawns like need to be green to be healthy, but like during like the fall and the winter, they're actually supposed to get a little brown, so it's unnecessary to sprinkle them. Like they're still like a healthy lawn that's sure. normal. That's I I learned a lot by going there that day, and especially with all the fish and all the th <laughs> experiments that you were doing with those. Um, but I mean that's something. Again, can you come tell my husband that he only <laughs> needs to water for so long? Because I mean, after an inch, it goes, it goes dormant. I mean, I learned so much just being there. But um, yeah, I think you guys are going to do great by putting those flyers out, and they were bumper stickers they were talking about, and a whole thing. And I ended up seeing that one guy um, that made the movie. That actually, that there was that other movie that was really funny. Um, and I saw him in Best Buy that night, and it was, or that was like the following evening. And um, after I asked him if he could get my husband a discount on a TV, I said that he did a really great job. And I was telling my husband all about that day and on how much that we actually learned from you guys. So um, I know everybody's movie couldn't be played and everybody couldn't be here to talk, but please tell them they all did great. OK, well, um, one observation that I, uh, that I particularly <coughs> enjoy about these types of presentations is to see two governmental entities <coughs> collaborating. We've got the water utility, which serves all of our citizens, and we've got the school district that serves all of our citizens. And, you know, sometimes we all operate on our own worlds, but the reality is, is uh, oftentimes there's a lot more in common than not. We can all learn from each other, and we can all build on our mutual successes. So I just want to thank everybody that's been involved in this collaborative process and starting way, way back in the 80s. Um, it's been a wonderful program. The hands-on learning, you know, we're all about that these days, and uh, collaborative learning, uh, the class. I, last year I attended the presentations that your students had. It was really a fun session just hopping from table to table and listening to the students explain pro our, uh, uh, programs uh, that they had come up with themselves, you know, certainly with your guidance, but very insightful to see our kids use that day information uh, that they get out of the, the book learning and the, the learning off the iPads and, and the learning from our educators to put that to use. That's the real world and that's really great. So thank you all so much uh, and keep the ball moving forward.